Welcome to our lecture online. We often get the question from our viewers, why do we need a differential when we integrate a function or an expression? And so I thought, well, yeah, that um, it might be a good idea to do some videos explaining why we do that and how to get the proper differential before you can integrate it, because that's often the question as well. Why do we need to insert a 2 or a 3 or divide by 2 or something like that? Well. We'll try to make it clear to you in this next series. So we're going to start with this first video, why do we need them in the first place, and then we'll show you some examples of how to apply what we just learned. So everybody pretty well knows that, well, at least those who have studied some, some integration, some calculus, some integration, that the integral of dx is equal to x plus a constant of integration. And if we see something like this, the integral of x times dx, well, we know that's x squared over 2 plus a constant of integration. We really never give it any thought as to why that dx is there. We just kind of take it for granted and, okay, it's there, and, and where did it go? Well, it just kind of disappeared, right? What we did was we added 1 to the exponent, divided by a new exponent, added a constant of integration, and somehow that dx just disappeared. And you say, well, where did it go? Well, what if we didn't have it there in the first place? What if we had the integral of x? Well, it turns out we cannot execute that. It's not possible. This is not the right form. We need that dx. We need that differential. So why? Well, let's do an example. Let's say we have a function where y is equal to 1 quarter the quantity x squared plus 1 to the 4th power plus 5. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the derivative of this with respect to x, that's the d dx of the function, and when we do that, we have 4 times a quarter, which is 1, times x squared plus 1 to the exponent 1 less, which is 3. The derivative of a constant is 0, so that drops off, times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, which is 2x. So now we know that dy dx is equal to x squared plus 1 to the third power times 2x, and then if we solve this for dy, we move the dx to the other side, we end up with x squared plus 1 cubed times 2x times dx. Now realizing that we have a dy there which is equal to this, so what if I take this and I integrate dy? Well, I should get y back plus a constant of integration, but if we integrate dy, we get y. So if we integrate this, we should get y back the original function, so we're going to integrate this. Now notice I wrote 2x and dx in a different color. This is called our differential. And now when we integrate this, we, uh, we add 1 to the exponent, so we take x squared plus 1 to the fourth power, divide by new exponent, plus the constant of integration, and this simply disappears, just like the dx disappeared in our example over there. So you say, well, why is that? Well, notice that I end up with the very same function that I started with. The constant of integration, I don't know the information enough to, knew, to know that this was a 5, but we know there might be some constant there, so we had a constant of integration. But notice, when I do this, I get the exact same function that I started with. I took the derivative, I integrated, I end up with the same function. This here is a differential that we need in order to get my original function back. So, one way to take a look at it is to say, well, let's take our same function again, like we did before. We have y equals 1 quarter x squared plus 1 to the 4 power plus c. In this case, c was 5. And we're going to let u be what's inside the parentheses, x squared plus 1. Then du dx, the derivative of u with respect to x, is simply 2x. And then if I multiply the dx over here, we have du equals 2x dx. So if I'm going to integrate that, notice I can integrate, and actually I should have written that down over here, so I'm going to do that. Let me move over a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate my u times du. And notice that this is du to the third power. I actually, I guess I did do it right there. I, I guess I should have written this first like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate u cubed du, which is essentially u cubed is this quantity cubed, and my du is 2x dx. So I end up with u cubed du. And when I integrate, I need to have that du. I need to have that differential. 
So notice my du in this example is the 2x dx. So when I integrate, I get u to the fourth over 4 plus c, and the du drops off. That's your differential. And so when you integrate this, this drops off, and you're simply going to get, well, when you integrate, we get x squared plus 1 to the fourth power divided by the new exponent 4 plus a constant of integration. So there you see that whenever you integrate something, you must have the proper differential. And there's different ways in which we can figure out what that is. We can use the substitution method to find the proper differential. So that way we know that if we're going to integrate u cubed, which is x squared plus 1 cubed, like we do over here, we have to have a proper du, which in this case is 2x dx, which has to be there. So you cannot integrate this without this. Just the same way that you cannot integrate x without having a dx, you cannot integrate a u cubed unless you have a du. You cannot integrate an x squared plus 1 cubed unless you have the 2x times dx. And so every integral has to have its proper differential. Now, in the next well, maybe nine or so videos, I think that's how many we have planned, we're going to show you various examples where this is utilized so you can then learn and see why you need the proper differential and how to obtain that proper differential so you can then integrate your function. And so stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.